Welcome to the Rough Fish Registry. Episode number 22. 22. Not yes. to be confused with next week's 22. Yeah, you know. Whatever. That's okay. We're just a bunch yeah. of hillbillies doing a podcast. Yep. Wow, today. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Before we get started, I want everybody to go to iTunes. Mm-hmm. Type in Rough Fish Registry on the podcast section. That's true. Do that. And hit subscribe. Leave a comment. And leave a comment. I yeah. haven't checked in a while. Last one I saw was Gooch underscore 90. Left yeah. a comment. No, we got one more. Oh, we did? Oh, one good. more since then. Yeah. Good. Good. And then go to Facebook. Yep. And like that page. And then Instagram. And Instagram and give us a follow. It's good stuff. Yep. So this Speaking week, of Facebook. Oh, gosh. Dang. Gosh, I'm on it. Trans- Transition. Speaking of Facebook. Yep. Um, some of you guys might have seen this video floating around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, got a few, got a few views. This little little boat called the Metal Shark. Yeah, you may have heard of her. Yeah, might have heard of her. She's, She's kind of a legend, kind of like Jeff Browning. Yep, but the boat is not the whole story. Metal Shark is a manufacturer that builds boats. Yeah, it's the drive system that's uh, where the magic happens. The Swamp Shark. Yes. Swamp Easily shark. confused, but very different. Uh-huh. One and the same. Yeah. So the Metal Shark is the boat, the hull, the Swamp Shark is the drive. The Swamp Shark drive can be put into... Any boat. Any boat. Yeah. 20 foot or bigger. Yep, that's what he said. That's what he recommends. Yeah. So on this episode, we have Mr. Clint and... I can't say his last name very well. Clint's awesome guy. Yep. Big Clint. Got him on the show. Yep. And he's going to tell us about how he got started kind of in the business and with the Swamp Shark. So, Clint, uh, welcome to the Rough Fish Registry. Can uh, you give us a little bit of a background on how you got started? It was a, a waste transfer system, environmental waste transfer system in the oil field that I moved drilling waste, <clears throat> non-hazardous drilling waste, waste without spilling anything in the uh, wildlife refuges and all. That's what made it grow. But uh, the knowledge of uh, bearing technology and sealing technology that I learned from that 25 years ago is what got this. It is it's what got me to building this drive with uh, the, the level of engineering that's applied to it. You know, so that's that's where that all started. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's. Uh, so how does that you know? So give us the actually just give us the rundown on how the how the Swamp Shark drive actually works. And uh, we've seen the videos, we see what it's capable of, and we've seen some pictures and some things. But uh, if you give us like a quick, you know, rundown how this, you know, how it actually works, that'd be really helpful. It's, it, it's, 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 uh, uh, you know, it pivots off of a, a point that where it bolts on the back of the hull of the boat, which is a three-eight thick a plate of steel that has uh, 17 half-inch bolts uh, bolting it to the transom of, of the boat that is, uh, it's, it's put, you know, applied to. And it comes out to about the equivalent of an eight and a half inch a pin of, uh, you know, a grade eight bolts. I mean, it's virtually impossible to break that off. But uh, it pivots uh, on a, a steering octagon, and it, and the U joint it has a watertight, uh, I have watertight U joints, and but they they uh, turn in a boot that I designed out of solid billet aluminum and a rubber boot with a spring in it, and. What it does, the, the U joints are, are dry in there, and it turns 28 degrees to either side with a total sweep of about 56, de- well, 56 degrees, and it's got a trim angle of from from the draw being level on the trim indicator ga- gauge, uh, 24 degrees up and 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 uh, and 19 down. It's got a total sweep of roughly uh, 43 degrees, trimmed all the way down and tilted all the way up. It's power steering like a car, so there's no steering input. Like if you drive an outboard motor that needs a torque tab or whatever, it's okay. uh, it's 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 just you drive it with your fingertips, and uh, it all the all of the grease points on the on this uh, drive are sealed with O-rings. So what happens with that? You, you you put a couple of shots of grease in 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 the trim arm where it trims up and down. That, that uh, position trim that with uh, a couple of two three shots of grease every about 90 days and the the, the uh, steering uh bushings also uh every three months uh, a couple of shots of grease and you're done with that and uh it's uh has three bearing points on it 
where uh, it, it, it's it's a it's a pod as you will like a kind of like an oil filter, but it doesn't look like an oil filter that you can actually just remove the, the uh, bearing pod in front of the uh, propeller like you would unscrew an oil filter off of a car if you had a bearing or a seal issue, which in four and a half years of doing R&D, uh, we haven't had any issue where we were in a bond to where it would have needed to be changed. It's got a reservoir, half-gallon reservoir, gear oil, and it, it'll tell you where the oil level is in the drive and also in the through transom bearing housing where the drive line runs through the transom to the back of the transmission, which is bolted to the engine. So this thing is easily uh, serviceable, but also very low maintenance compared to some of these old uh, Super Go Devil uh, units they had out here. The guy that actually invented this concept, uh, which is, is unlike mine, it was called an uh, anti-cavitation device, and it, it looked, it, it 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 trimmed it went up and down uh and and steered just like mine does but it was set to where the the uh, drive shaft and prop angle was roughly 25 degrees so it actually caused the boat to plow it was a whole different thing and they used just like an old call over sort of spring for rebound and, and mm. use a cutlass cutlass bearing to where you had sand and mud or whatever uh liquid uh, it mixed with solids would go in there to uh you know, try to cool the bearing, and all it did, did was uh, just, you know, just grind itself to pieces. And it, it, no, no uh, U joint technology. What I've like, what I've found, and what I've done in parts I've machined. So it had very little steer, steering angle. And in the <clears throat> uh, mid '70s, uh, the, someone from here, uh, uh, Morgan near Morgan City, Louisiana. Uh, built a unit and it was a uh, very rudimentary, uh, <clears throat> rudimentary, and it it looked um, like it was built in someone's shed in the back, and it, it had no improvements. And hmm. they actually the only improvements was they took a four wheeler winch, and that's what it would trim up and down with. And it had two call over shocks, like you can buy at a parts house, and right. and it was there was no type of deflection system. So what happened is this thing's hanging under the boat about 25 degrees, and uh, Whatever you ran into, logs, stumps, or whatever, it just slammed into it. Where where mine has so many different characteristics in that. Uh, like I previously said, turns in oil. You can see oil level at any moment. Just look through the engine cover. It's all fully hydraulic. It's got a a, a patented uh, hydro electronically controlled hydraulic rebound system. So, which that's, I can, so that's what's controlling whenever you hit those logs. And it's and it's causing yeah. it to come back into you know proper, proper. Pitch. It, yes, it it's a uh, it's a, a stainless steel spring that I came up with the spring rate on, you know, from having hot rods in the past and knowing spring rates on performance cars, I came up with my own spring rate to where it's X amount of pounds of, of resistance at the bottom, and then as it goes higher up, it's got more resistance <clears throat> up until in excess of 500 pounds of resistance, which. Uh, they would be way up and, and your drive would be out of the water. But what happens is there's a hydraulic cylinder that is encased within that, that stainless steel spring. And uh, that is encased in a, an aluminum uh, billet aluminum canister and it travels in and out. So if you, if you adjust this thing here and, and you have it trimmed exactly like there's a preset position, you can do this. And it, it's actually down about seven or eight degrees below, below level trim, but there's hardly any resistance. But this rebound system inside, there's oil between the top of the piston on the trim cylinder and the bottom of the uh, the, the top of the cylinder in, inside of the rebound system. And what it does is the harder you push against it, more resistance. But you basically set this thing up to where you put it, you put your gauge on, it's a digital readout gauge and it's on level trim and you're dead at the center of your trim face. And then you lock this thing with a, an auxiliary switch at the bottom and you trim down until there, there are three dots lit to your left as it's trimmed down. And then you forget about it. You leave it like that all day long or as long as you're rotting. So what happens, it goes down about seven degrees. So the boat planes flat like you're trimmed down, although it's not trimmed down all of the way, has about another 10 or 11 degrees to go down. And 
the more power you apply to it, it pushes up against the spring and the little bit of oil that took place of air in your lines. And then it comes to where it's perfectly trimmed where you want. It's got the nice rooster tail back there. Mm -hmm. You're running, you're running toward the bowels up and this thing is running like a true surface drive. And you, like my boat has got 500 horse and 500 foot pounds of torque. I'll adjust it like that. And uh, through the transmission quarter to one reduction, it's got 625 foot pounds of torque. And this engine is a, a, a Corvette engine, LS3 engine. And it turns 7,000 RPM. So I can spin the prop shaft 50, 250 RPM, and it won't go beyond where I had it trimmed. And when you let off of the guys, it just more, less resistance against it. Prop doesn't have to try to climb out of the water as much. And it goes down and it just runs over everything you run over smoothly. Hmm. You'd be running 45, 50 miles an hour. You have two, three logs laid down in the middle of the bayou. And the boat just slides over it, and this thing, all it does, just slides over everything. I mean, I've been running this boat for over uh, two and a half years, and you can run your fingers along the keel, and, and there's not a chip or or anything like it's, like it's ever hit anything. Of course, I imagine if you hit steel, it'd be a different thing, but who runs it? There's no steel out there <laughs> boating, you know? Yeah, That's true. Uh, and and we, uh, I've done a test about a month ago. We went to... Uh, meet some guys up there uh, next to home of Louisiana. And I've done boat shows and spent a lot of money at boat shows and haven't had very much an interest in sales. But I started this thing on social media where uh, people <clears throat> oh, oh, oh message me and I'll say, well, look, let's make an appointment. Gather some of your people together and this cuts everything out. It's one thing to try to sell something on a on a boat trailer, but then you turn around and you go out and say, look, you think your swamp is worse than mine? I'll go meet you. Let's make an appointment, set up set up the deal, the weekend, the whatever, when everybody's free, and I'll go out there and I'll show you what the swamp shark is really about, all about. Yeah. So the the thing that really up. impresses me about you know your videos and and the metal shark videos is is your drive kind of bridges the gap between a low horsepower you know, mud motor, whether it's a mud buddy or pro drive and an airboat, you know, it's kind of, it gives you that power to be able to run a little faster and, and to get places that, that you might not be able to get with just a, a 40 horse mud motor, but yeah, it's know, got all the power. Yeah. But it's all got the all the power need. of an yeah. airboat. That's, that's what intrigued me more than anything. So you, so Clint, you told me a little bit in a prior conversation about your boat and, uh, well, first, let me back up. How long have you been working on this uh, project? I've been working chart? on this about five and a half years. Five I, and a half years. Was, yeah, retirement project from, from their 16 years this year. I sold my prior invention in business, and I was retired and had about 10 years of piddling around with my hot rods and do, trying to find a few things I think I might want to do instead of not doing anything. And one of my buddies, uh, uh, rolling rule man we grew up together and he's about a couple two three years older than me and he drug he was like an older brother to me uh, he drug me around the swamp everywhere and showed me a lot of things and uh my dad died when i was younger uh uh and uh so after he went uh i had no one to take me hunting and doing anything so he took me around and let me tell you we we had a lot of fun till <laughs> one day he finally comes and he says we like the squirrel hunt over here in Louisiana by boat, which is legal. They finally realized that the squirrel has a greater advantage if you're in a boat versus having a dog and being under a tree. Okay. To me, and, to me, that's part of the cool, the coolest part of the story. When we first talked, you, he was like, "I started this to try to, to, because we like to go squirrel hunting in the swamp from a boat." And I'm like, "That's the coolest thing I've ever heard." <laughs> that's well, we we have this thing down here. Us Cajuns call it float on. And most people call it floaters. And I've got an older cousin of mine in early spring. It was still pretty cool. One Sunday, uh, me and uh, Jimmy Gravo with Metal Shark Boats, he's the one that I've just linked up with. And we're going to be offering swamp sharks uh, to the military worldwide, all forces, including about um, 20 other countries that he, that are ally countries that we, uh, we, uh, uh, he builds boats for. So there's the interest we've been, we've been going back and forth with the Navy for two years now. And, uh, we we you know it, it the, the the i mean it's just so broad sweeping the interest but i what i wanted to do 
we went out there and we went to rod and there are those floaters out there uh you know whatever bird droppings or whatever just go, grows out there and most of that stuff is in the woods but over here where we live in the swamp which is the chafalaya swamp i think it's one of the largest if not the largest uh swamp I I in the country there these floaters grow like big vines you know like if you're in the woods and you got big poison ivy vines and and when the water goes down in the summer, those things are just sitting on the mud at the bottom. So all of those plants, all of those millions and millions of plants, the roots grow and they sap that, that, that soft mud underneath. And then eventually when the water comes back up in the winter, late, early fall, sometimes, sometimes the late winter, well, dirt is caught around all of those roots. And then it picks up and it, 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 it just eventually gets thicker and thicker. We've got places where that, that mud and these roots are eight foot thick. So when the water comes up and those things float up, some sometimes they're only three foot, four foot, but they may have 10, 12 foot of water underneath them. Well, believe me, you can't go if you can't go without what I have out there. I mean, I don't know what it is about that uh, Teflon under their airboat uh, hulls. There's some type of a, 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 a grass and, and you know that grows out there. And it, it just grabs onto that. I have a friend that's got an airboat with 850 horse. And when I first took him out, he's got a tour boat deal. And he takes people out on tours. And he wanted one of these swamp sharks. But he said, let me go see what he's going to do. So I said, okay, well, we're going to go out there in the floaters. And we go a good piece in there. And I'm just high idling and we're getting around. And uh, he says, look, man, if you don't mind, he said, uh, I'd like for you to turn around. He said, I've never been this far. I came with my airboat, my tour boat with nobody in it. And he said, uh, well, I almost got stuck here. And he said, if we get stuck over here, we have nothing to come out here and, uh, and get us. Oh, I said, don't worry about that. I've been a lot further than that. So I just kept on going in the woods. And I went probably almost a half a mile further than he would have wanted to go. And he turned around and said, look, just please. Uh, I'm not scared, but I don't <laughs> how are we going to get out of here? I said, we good. So I turned around and I said, you ready? I said, uh, we're going to get on step in this and get back. Oh, he said, there's no way. He said, there's no way you're getting on step, man. He said, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm going to be honest with you. I said, don't worry about it. We got on step and we just run out there in a couple of minutes that where we rode in there. And he said, if I had my checkbook right now, he said, I'd make you a check right now. I just can't. <laughs> and and, and this, I went to school with this guy. I graduated a year before him. He said, this is just absolutely unbelievable. So that's where, where we started and, 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 and we – there, there are a lot of places where there's no pressure on the wildlife, which uh, I'm good with that because if we, if if our life, wildlife uh, doesn't survive, what happens to our sport? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yep. I, I, yep. And, and and I'm I'm very much against anyone that has no respect for la for nature. And uh, but uh, we go, out, you can go out there and you can idle through it with this. You can't go through. Uh, anything that doesn't have anything similar to this design which mine is the one that is uh, uh way ahead of everybody else uh you know uh, engineering wise and hydrodynamically wise uh that most of these uh and I, this old cousin of mine he's 84 years old and you wouldn't imagine he's still crawl fishing in the swamps of henderson and everywhere and he had one of these old super go devils but it's it's it, it it's just not it, it, it doesn't work. And uh, I went up there and I showed him what I was going to do. And we went and we worked on his boat to get it running and to take it out there and just to show him. And I told him, I said, look, can you just trim up a little bit, pick up with the winch, pick the drive up a little bit? He thought that he'd have to be banging the prop against roots and everything down there, digging and everything. And when he trimmed it up a little bit, and uh, it, all of a sudden, it, the, the idle speed picked up without him touching the throttle. And then I started showing him. I said, you see what I want to do? Uh, but they had these paddle-type propellers. And I tried them on, on my uh, first drive when we were doing R&D. You can't you, – you have to have a – rate. It, I designed my own uh, uh, weedless mud wheel also. If you don't have any rake in a prop, there's no way – if it doesn't have any back angle to it, there's no way for it to surface and run like a true surface drive is supposed to run. And he couldn't believe it. And well, a lot of naysayers around here say, well, that's never going to work. So I didn't worry about that. I, I, I experienced the same thing when I 
build a pump to pump drill cuttings from the well bore, a bore a drilling an oil well. And I ended up pumping 86% solids by volume because of what I, I, I knew about hydrodynamics. And I'm just self-taught on that. And I applied it to the prop and everything that uh, I applied to this drive. Uh, it uh, basically, I tried to, I fixed everything that I always had problems with, with an outboard motor in the swamp, trying to traverse the swamp get where I wanted to get. And, and uh, the Swamp Shark Drive is the ultimate swamp machine. It's not called, it, it's not named that way for nothing. I mean, it actually is the king of the swamp. And uh, mm. uh, I, I don't, I'll take any challenger, anyone. I'm not a gambling man, but I can tell you <laughs> that in my environment, this this thing is the king by far. Yeah. So, so that we have some like technical questions or some questions that, you know, guys will, post questions on or videos on the video and the so you told me or you told us about the turning radius and had 28 degrees i believe you said so 56 total so in regards to you know everyday use is that as much or more can it spin around just as quick or faster than just a standard outboard on a you know 18 foot boat is it about the same? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, my boat's 22 foot. Uh, what I can do is I can send you a video that we have that's unedited, and you, you'll have to take the talking points off the end from uh, us preparing things for a uh, uh, metal shark, what we're doing in our presentations to the armed forces. And I can show you in a very tight ag- uh, area how quick this uh, this uh, 22 foot boat can turn. Okay. Uh, I have the. Uh, the uh, cubic inch of the steering valve, it's got a steering valve in the dash, just like a, a tractor, just a hydraulic rotary valve. And that's what comes with the whole package also. I'll furnish that, that steering valve, the column that you bolt your steering wheel to, all of the uh, military-grade hydraulic lines and fittings, and this rebound system, less the propeller and the boot or, or, or what I sell. And then naturally, I have a... a uh, options for extra things. In other words, you got to have a prop. I sell the prop and the bushings. And then I, I've also designed is a patent pending keel cooling system that we're even uh, 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 cooling the boost air on this diesel engine in this boat, that uh, this Navy boat. So uh, we, you run the, boat, the motor on a trailer for, for a couple of hours, it'll never get hot. It just comes to the, to the uh, uh, thermostat uh setting at like 160 degrees and uh there's no appendages appendages under the boat what it basically does it is it uh, heat soaks the whole hull more heat it creates the further it travels and when you set it in the water i mean you idle this thing around all day long i don't care how hot it is uh running it under 2000 rpm and it never gets any hotter than 150 degrees mm. it's got an also part of my engineering dealing this by having uh, Caterpillar equipment and all types of, of, of equipment through my life and my previous business. I know about uh, heat dissipation and, 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 and knowing what it takes to make engines live. I've actually got a, a, the keel cool system quenches the, the, the heat on your power steering oil, transmission oil, and engine oil. The engine oil, it, it takes so long for the engine oil to get to even look like it's going to get light brown that you just changed the oil. It's been that long. Uh, it, it's that efficient at doing that. So I've, I've, I've you know, applied things that I've learned in, in my previous business uh, about maintaining and, and making equipment live. All of my knowledge uh, about engines and, 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 and uh, things as such and, and made this thing to where it's basically bulletproof. If you I look down and check you all and do a couple of little things. Nothing different from whatever you're doing on an outboard motor. You're not worried about it except you're not worrying about running over anything. Right. You just, there's there's no worry about that. I ride people with this thing, in this thing, where they're out there laughing uncontrollably. They just can't believe what it, how easy and and how you don't feel anything. It's, 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 it's really uh, remarkable. You do things... As an inventor, you always do things, and my previous inventions were the same. You thought you knew what the characteristics would be, and sure, it is what you thought it was, but then it does so many other things that you didn't realize that it would do. That, that's uh, kind of like uh, the surprise element of, of building things sure. like this and, and truly finding it out 
once you get you, you apply it to a boat and you do what you do in it. Yeah. Uh, what about I, uh, so so Clint? I, we have some questions also about um, so down there in the swamp. That's pretty clear just on the video that it can take a it can take a beating um, around our part of the country too. Here in the Midwest, you know, we also have we got quite a few rivers and things like that. Um, how does that how does the system handle gravel? Now, obviously, the prop is going to take damage just like any any prop would in gravel but you know does it rebound just as well i mean how does it handle rocks i mean if you're trying to run rivers like a we we never we never ran in rocks at all uh the keel on it as you can see in the design and the pictures it's it it, the keel uh, right there right in front of the prop actually goes about an inch and a half below the prop so if you hit a rock and you run over a rock uh straight on, uh, like you would, uh, go over a stump or, or a log, it would be a much more solid blow. But the, uh, again, my, my, my patented, uh, uh, I have a deflector plate, which I call a sh- shoe plate and this cover bolts on the back of the, the boat. And it's a three, eight thick steel plate that is roughly about 10 inches long. It's got two forty five degree bends into it. And the front of this cover that I earlier explained uh, the way it bolts onto the back of the boat, it uh, it's three eighths of an inch thick steel. So what happens is, is no matter what you run over, and especially where it's where it's uh, has to do, where if it's in the center and and it's going to encounter the drive, this shoe plate is going to lift the boat up to that height, height, and then what happens is uh, what happens to the drive is minimal. Mm. You can't. You can't, in my case, if you're in a swamp and you run along some, a side, a log that is parallel to the boat, it would be the same thing for a rock, but it would be a lot harder, you know, naturally than a, even a piece of oak that you would do that. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it's one of those things. But when you're on step and running, there's basically only about a two to two and a half inches of the tip of the prop that's in the water. It's uh. I know a jet drive is, is, is dead even with the bottom of the boat. And I would say the keel and the if when you're running on surface and say you're running through a, share, a shallow area, you probably have a total, the inch and a half of the keel and then the two and a half inches of the uh, uh, prop being in the water, you got an exposure of about four inches. But if there's anything solid enough, to lift the drive, uh, you know, against the, the electronic hydraulic suspension system, it'll just easily slide over and lift up to whatever height that is. Mm. Now, it's just like any propulsion system. If you're, you've got something to the side and, and, and it, it's, it's big enough to where it can impact the propeller, well, there's nothing you can do there. Sure. The sure. No, I was but, just curious if, if there was any, you know, even just, you know, in these rivers down here, a lot of just pea gravel and things like that. Just I just didn't know. Yeah, well, that, any... that, all that'll do is just like sand wear on the right, props. Right, right, exactly. And uh, my, my propeller's a 15-5 stainless and uh, Hill Marine propeller in, uh, next to Los Angeles, California, which is an 80-somewhat-year-old prop company. They my, my mold is up there, and they do all of my props. And they have a heck of an annealing uh, process to where, these props are real hard, and 15.5 stainless has an, an awesome characteristic, uh, to, uh, meaning uh, for the first X amount of months of life, the flexing actually causes it uh, to move the molecules in the prop, and it makes that, that propeller get to be harder. Hmm. Uh, you're not going to get a harder problem, especially like where we run. I've got some videos of running on last summer, down here every summer they try to drop the uh the the basin down to where all of this hot driller and all of this vegetation we have to try to you know kill it mm-hmm. uh they spent millions trying to get rid of it and it's not worth the money because it doesn't stop it, it it's like cutting your grass and then they just grow back uh and they let it down and i rolled up on a hard clay bank up there with very little moisture and we've we've never done anything to a propeller doing that. I mean, it, it and it's 16 inches in diameter, so there's a lot of leverage on the prop shaft, and we basically have not had any trouble on any of that. As for breaking prop shafts or doing anything as such, we've had so much great luck with the 
sealed new joints also. But uh, uh, you you that'll give you an idea of what kind of side load it can take. But I mean, mm. if you if you bang that thing against a boulder, I don't think there's too much of anything that's going to live against a boulder. No, no, no. It's just a just a general question, really. Just to you know, I know yeah. Well, I'm not I'm not trying to you know I'm not trying to defend this. I, I just want to be very truthful about it. Sure. Of course. And we've got sand down here in Louisiana, and sand is sand. Wherever the other mud, mud motors are going to go in sand, well, you could but uh, you could but imagine. I had a guy that asked me one time, would sell me this thing. Tell me, which, uh, why don't you uh, rate your Swamp Shark drive versus my little mud motor? And I don't, I don't knock any of them. That's not my style. I think it's a good design. I think it's a proven design. These guys have had a uh, I mean, a bonus of, 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 of good fortune selling and people enjoying these things. And this guy was a little adamant about he was trying to, you know, he was trying to corner me until he kept on going and said, well, look, you still haven't sold this to me. I said, I'll tell you what, it's about like comparing a Shetland pony to a full-blown thoroughbred racehorse. Let me just tell you, that's the best <laughs> analogy I can come up with. And, and, and that's how drastic it is. If you, if you can go, 25 foot on the sand bank with, with your boat, well, I can promise you the swamp shark is going to go about 200 foot on that bank before you're going to stop it. And I've actually tested that deal and ended up on high, hard ground in home a, a, a month ago when we went to do a demonstration with some guys with the uh, old uh, mud boat styles with the keels underneath the boats with the rudder and all that. And I actually, and the only reason I chopped the throttle was because it, we were on hard ground and I was afraid the boat was going to turn over to the right on us. I was only about eight foot from re-entering the water, and we actually went 220 feet on hard ground with my boat, a 3,500-pound boat. Hmm. So that, and I guess I that answers full, the question if it can run dry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it can it, it, it run dry because what the, the Navy guys wanted to know too because, I mean, if they're chasing the bad guys, They'll run up the bank and, 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 and keep the the heat on them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And what yes, I've basically I do. been, we, I, I, you know, I, I, what I've been doing the last four and a half years, my two first two guys are crawfishmen, and then my friend, he crawfishes with his now. But the, and, and I'll tell you, both of those guys could probably crack an anvil with a rubber hammer. I'm not literally, these guys are some, some rough and tough guys. And I, you know, I put the drives on the boats and I said, now, nah, Y'all break them. And he turned around and looked at me and said, huh? I said, well, how the hell do you think I'm going to be able to eventually sell anything to anybody if it breaks for nothing? <laughs> and yeah. that was more or less our, you know, my scope on starting and, and doing this thing. And what my, my, my attitude towards this thing is this. I built this thing with the way people in America Oh man, America is America what it is today because of our attitude of doing things and doing them right. And, and, you know, the way people built things in the 40s and the 50s, you know, you, you they were just over redundant. And uh, part of, I, I have a little motto for the Swamp Shark Drives. It's Swamp Shark Drives, nothing compares. But one of the, the, the best ones, and I, and I think that is going to be pretty much uh, right along the same lines, we are not in the parts business because everything is so redundant on this thing. Uh, you might eventually have to change some seals. But I don't know about that for how long it's going to be because I use the best seals that money can buy. It's a material called Viton, V-I-T-O-N. And it, I'll tell you what, the races are 68 Rockwell hardness. That's a pretty tough uh, uh, metallurgy, you know, a, a bearing race. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the Viton seals cut a little groove in the races, which if that happens, that's a bonus because it gives it an, a, an area fit to just kind of go in. And to tell you, if a seal is going to cut a 68 hardness rock, uh, Rockwell hardness race, you got a good seal. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I've got a piece. <laughs> Not of, really, uh, but sure. <laughs> I've got a I've got a a, a, a 60 to 61 billet aluminum quarter of an inch thick bushing that presses in first. That's only got uh, seven and a half thousandths clearance on each side. And then the seals go in just to keep things from going into the seals to protect the seals. So, uh, and if any any vegetation got in there, I could tell you I'm not worried about fishing string if it would get in. But uh, the way we do the bushing and all, it'd be pretty hard. But if it can cut a a, 
a race with the hardness it is, I don't think a fishing strain going to bug it in it. And mm, uh, right. that's the type of, of deal. Now, another thing, too, unlike all other surface drives, I'm not going to mention any name, the top of the line ones today and all. I know about all of them. What I did is I addressed, I addressed the thrust issue with my drive right there in front of the bearings at the prop. And the same way uh, uh, on, on the U-joints and all. So what happens is you've got a 16-inch diameter prop that's going in, 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 in hard vegetation, uh, pretty solid dirt and mud to where, it, like what I did when I climbed the bank, that would you, you could hear the video and it would say pieces of earth are flying in there. Well, what happens there is all that, all of that, and especially on a surface drive, your your the tips of your, of your bla- blades on your propeller are, are, are trying to flex that prop or that shaft. So what happens is if you don't addre- address your thrust issues where this prop is pushing this boat around and you've got all of these tremendous side loads from running surface, even if you're just running in clear water, there's a lot of uh, destabilization. But what happens with that is... It's all addressed in front of the bearing cartridge that screws on that can be taken off. It comes with its own tool that, that's, that cut out a laser, and it's laser-cut swamp shark on the tool. That also comes with the drive. So when you stop all of that vibration right there at the rear, none of, that, none of those side loads and that whipping effect that it wants to do to, to the prop shaft, which is, is 39 inches long, goes to your U-joint or anything, it doesn't, you stop the destabilization at the point of impact. But, and that's what I've done. And also it's engineered into it. So in, if you can change spark plugs in your car, you can work on this thing because it, it the, the, the cartridges screw on, they have a set screw you undo. And the time it takes to take the prop off, you can take the bearing cartridge in the rear off in the field, anywhere you add if you've got an extra loaded cartridge. And it's already pre-set in it to where you've got 6,000s clearance for reverse and for forward. And when you tighten it all the way up to where you can't pull it anymore and you lock it, that's it. You don't have to come with a dial indicator or any kind of sophisticated equipment to try to bring this thing back to where your tolerances on your bearings and everything are off. So you can work on this thing in the field if you have that problem in the rear. And I'll tell you, you're not going to have that problem because you'll always be able to get back in. We've run the bearings half full of water and oil and everything to see what we could do to break it. And we've never even had a hot spot on a bearing, to tell you the truth. So I'll I'll put extensive knowledge uh, from things that I've learned, wrenching myself over the years. And what's better than having your your thrust bearing set at the impact point and not having it go like the others they have and then they have a cup and cone bearing cup and cone bearing it's kind of like a a, a a prop it's always trying to find a path of resistance to walk out try to get out the water if the boat's light enough a prop walk into the direction that the boat the prop is turning and and uh also on the bait my base drive that you see all boats with I use a, it's a dial like your watch. It's a, a, a radial thrust bearing, and it can take 26,500 pounds of thrust at 7,600 RPM. And so the less RPM you turn, the more uh, uh, ability it has to take more thrust. And what I do, it doesn't give you double redundancy, but I, I use the thickest race wash I can get for it, and I put two of these thrust bearings in forward and two in reverse, all in sequence. Hmm. I mean, you can't, uh, out of everything that I've learned working on things and, 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 and knowing what I know about metallurgy and bearing technology, you can't get any stronger than that. And then the drive line, also, I use uh, 17.4 Aquamet, which is a uh, double heat treated, 1150 stainless shaft. You can't get any better than that also. The, 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 the main drive shaft tube on this drive, is DOM tubing. DOM means drawn over mandrel tubing. It has no seam in it. So it's a more expensive, but you're not going to ever have to worry about no matter how much power you put to it, you're not going to split any seam on this thing. So so talking about power, what uh, what engine are you running in your boat? And then what are what kind of a recommended type as far as well, if someone bought your drive just for a, a play fun boat, you know, not looking for crazy speeds. Boat. Yeah, just uh, yeah. What's the, well? 
Go ahead. I'm going to be very frank. I'm a very safety-oriented guy. The reason that I can drive a boat like that, and I can tell you what, I don't want to, if y'all, y'all saw the videos, I don't want to drive this drive to its limits because I probably, I'll probably expire. This thing, nothing will stop this thing. This thing, uh, that's where people have to be very cautious about alcohol. This is not, this is not your dad is lawnmower motor. Mm-hmm. This thing will go highway speeds with a full boat in the woods, in shallow areas, stumpy areas, whatever. I have 500 horse on mine. It's a Rick Hendrick Motorsports LS3. It's 500 horse, 500 foot pounds of torque at 7,000 RPM, which I don't recommend anyone put that because I my boat is 3,500 pounds. It weighs about 30. Uh, uh, it it, it uh, it's 22 foot long, and it's just for demonstration purposes. It's so aggressive that I pulled it away from 7,000 RPM and brought it to 6,600. Because at 40, 50 miles an hour, it doesn't like any steering input if you intend on stepping on the gas. You have to be going straight before you do anything. It wants to push the rear end of the boat around where the front end is at. That's how aggressive it is. Yeah. I recommend if a guy's got – let me tell you, and and, and, and there, this, is, this is something that people need to understand. People call me, well, I want a four-cylinder, I want a six-cylinder, I want to do this and that. I can understand all that. I – spent a bunch of money on one of these little Ecotech motors that the people are really fired up about them turbocharging and all that on airboats and all. Mm-hmm. I have one that I've spent a bunch of money, a little uh, 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 direct injected one, Hemi head, Chevrolet, all aluminum. It is more expensive than your base Chevrolet engine that can that spank the, the pants off of it uh, and, and just too, too loud, too much noise, put all the quiet mufflers I could on it. And who wants to be... Uh, out there trying to hunt and, uh, and, and and have all kind of racket. Well, I recommend you can buy a crate motor from a lot of places. Uh, you know, I have people that do that. There are people all over our country that has a friend that's a good mechanic and he can manipulate the ECU on that engine and do whatever. I recommend a, as a, the base engine to uh, use, like you could use an old school 350. And say you can bomb nowadays 325 horse, 350 foot pounds of torque with a good holly carburetor, each HEI water pump. All you're going to need to do is add an alternator and a power steering pump. You're talking about a $4,000 motor. And I'll tell you what, if it makes 350 foot pounds of torque, I, re- I recommend the ZF uh, four and three quarter inch offset. That's four and three quarter inches from the center of the crankshaft of the engine and in the center of the output shaft below. I'll put this drive as center of gravity as low as you can in, in any boat. Uh, the, the, uh, the main drive line that goes into the drive uh, is roughly about four inches above the bottom of the boat. And uh, with 350 foot pounds of torque, you multiply that to- times 25%. Uh, you're talking about about 435 foot pounds of torque at the prop. I promise you. You can load that thing and put your dog, all your eyes, chest, your buddies, their guns and everything, and you go going to town. You're not even having to. <laughs> it's like a lot of people that call me and say, well, Clint, what do I do with, uh, what is it going to do for me? I, I have three mud motors. I have all this and that. And I said, man, whatever vehicle you drive, your HD, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, whatever you, you, you drive. I said, when you load that thing up and you, you and you got the boat on the back and everything, you're not worried about getting to the boat landing, are you? Well, I don't even think about it. I said, well, I tell you what, there's your answer. You load that boat like you want to load it, and you go to the camp, you put your four wheel on it, you do whatever, depending on the configuration of the boat you use, and you just go to town and you don't worry about it. And it's like, well, man, I, I just don't understand that. I said, well, come see me, come ride, and I'll show you what. And you and I won't even have to open it up. Uh, screaming fast or doing anything it just steps up so easy and that's the deal of it it's just like a car or a truck Mm -hmm. when you have an engine from uh say the best engine is the engine like the high intake manifold like in uh uh uh, the the ls motors uh that people have in a z71 truck or whatever Mm -hmm. uh and and you put that in the boat and it's going to perform the same way in the boat did the same deal i know there's a lot of uh there's a lot of bow fishing guys down around your area that that they'll run a 22 foot, you know, a 22 by eight, and they have to run triple mud motors on them. 
mm-hmm. just well, uh, just even run 20, 25 miles an hour when they're out guiding. And, uh, this, and then this seems like get, an awesome an awesome replacement at probably less of a cost than than three oh, new yeah. mud motors for sure. Probably well, fuel well, efficient. I'll tell you what. The base drive is seventeen five. It's it's uh, you know, you 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 do the whole drive line on this thing right here with a a new crate motor from everybody, you know, that's got crate motors in the country. Four thousand forty five hundred dollar crate motor. You do the whole drive line, everything for around thirty thousand dollars. We got the newest low mud motors, and they're a good idea, and they they make you know more a little more horsepower. But two of them, uh, uh, they ten bucks shy of thirty two thousand. Mm-hmm. And uh, yep. And uh, yep. And and so what are you gonna do? You're gonna turn around and for thirty thousand dollars, you can get about six or eight times the the the, the motor you have there. And 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 I don't I don't mean to and I don't want to talk about the others. It, it's just I'm trying to I'm trying to find a better comparison, uh, mm-hmm. Pete. Uh, uh, and uh, but uh, uh, and uh, and people think, well, that's going to burn a bunch of gas, you know, because the, uh, the first thing they think of, well, we, they're thinking 300, 350 horsepower outboard motor. Well, it ain't like that. You use about 25 to at most 40 percent of what that motor do on, does on average, and it's 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 middle of the road of that, probably 30 uh, percent and a little bit more of what the power that that motor has. You would not imagine how long it takes to burn uh, 20 gallons of gas in one of these rigs. I mean, it's going to be an all day long deal. And uh, now, if it's just like anything else, if you stay wide open all the time, well, you know, there it is, you know, mm-hmm. but, yeah, sure. but, uh, that's, that's, that's the deal there. So and, just, uh, so just like cruising around, say you got a, say you got a three, 350, 5.3 small block, something like that, you know, mm-hmm. just half throttle, whatever. So you're, you're cruising what, 35, 40 miles an hour pretty easily. But if you have throttle, you're going, you're going to do, yeah. 35, 40, real easy. I'll tell you what, with that, my base 18 pitch by 16 diameter prop, uh, 2,800 RPM is 30 miles an hour. If you're running at 3,200, which ain't nothing, you're doing about 38, 39 miles an hour. Yeah, that's yeah, that's awesome. That ain't working very hard for it. So, uh, no, so no. with your steering system, you said that that, the steering, I guess, uh, box or whatever actuator, co- or whatever actuator came with came with the system. With us bow fishing and and being on the front of the boat with you know our lights and everything, would there be a way to rig up um, a Ford throttle and Ford steering on a? We have that all in the making right now. Okay, we're fi- we're fixing to do a bow fishing rig for a customer that I'm doing a work boat and a tour boat for. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's, we're, we're putting all the preliminaries together. I've got a couple of ideas that I threw in this thing. And it's going to be something that, that you better hear it here that we're doing it first. Gotcha. Where he, he, he wants to do an eight foot wide bottom on a boat fishing rig, a deck boat mm-hmm. with the railings, uh, 10 foot on the top, 25 foot long. He's going to do a V6 turbo charge engine like we have on this Navy boat that we rigged here. Mm-hmm. Okay. And with a quiet muffler, that uh, that thing is about as quiet as a sewing machine. I kid you not. <laughs> and then we've uh, linked with a company that does a, a new brushless alternator. And you can buy it with 225 amps. And uh, we're going to put uh, a couple of big house batteries like on an RV on a bus. Sure. And and we're going to do the diode and the electrics to where the, the engine battery is always maintained. But we turn around and this, this uh, brushless alternator is going to eliminate having to have a generator and all the racket and everything while you're hunting, mm-hmm. uh, while, you, while you're bow fishing. And not it's going to be like the quietest experience you'll ever have bow fishing with full reverse, full, full steering, and all of the... Uh, the amenities that the swamp shark uh, uh, provides you versus, uh, you know, other equipment that is being used to bow fish. It's going to be really, uh, uh, we're really excited about doing this boat because it's uh, it's going to be the first in a line of many. Well, I've got 
many, many people right now, Londa, waiting for us to do something with that. But right now, with all of this information and, and, and everything that's happened in the last few weeks, we're well above 25 million hits, and we're just trying to uh, gather all this information and make sure that, and, and that's one big point I want to make. If you emailed me or text me or private message me and I haven't gotten back to you, it's not because we're trying to get away from people. We're, you, till you have to experience something like this, like I've never experienced it, the internet is an amazing tool. And, and, and we've got millions of emails to address, address and we're just trying to, to see the best way we can put all of this together. And we're, we've got a, a deal that we're doing, but we're not done yet. And we will get in touch with everybody that's, that's interested in the Swamp Shark and, and the Metal Shark products that we're going to be uh, promoting. Uh, it's just it's, 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 it's a daunting task because of yeah. the amount I can't imagine. It I get exploded. 20 emails a day at work and you know, you post a video on on Facebook Man, and hit 25 million views and a million emails. Man. I mean, that's it's crazy. Well, we're we're like 4.8 million on Facebook alone. That's the, the you know, the Metal Shark uh website and you know, I'll tell you what, it's it's a blessing for me cuz I'll tell you what. Uh Jimmy Gravo, the owner of Metal Shark Boats is a very very Good guy, and he. Let me tell you, you want to talk about an avid hunter and fisherman? He's the man. And when he first saw me, when he first saw this thing, my first little video, uh, he, the first thing he did was call me. Listen, I want in. I don't know if you're going to do it just to, to, to fly here to hunt or whatever. But man, listen, if you're going to go public with it and you're going to turn it into business, please call me back because I'll do everything I can within my powers to make sure it succeeds. What a guy! Mm -hmm. And uh, that's cool. And they were very cool. And and then now there's over four years we know each other, and we're basically around the same age. And it's just a very uh, it's a it's it's more of a friend thing than anything about business. And uh, we're just, the day after the first day, the Tuesday, we had a meeting, and everybody thinks dollar sign, and we're not thinking that. We looked at each other. And we looked at how much work it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. it's a bunch. But 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 we. We're moving forward. That we went when I went to the uh, Super Bowl of bow fishing uh, a couple of Sundays ago, uh, Saturdays ago. Uh, it you, was amazing. You went to the world. You went to the worlds over there. Yeah, in in uh, Lafitte, yep. and we. It was just absolutely amazing the response to this thing. I mean, uh, the people from all over the country, and that's the thing about the internet. that's just kind of. It kind of works on your head a little bit. And I go up there and everybody's saying, hey, Clint, oh, look, there's a swamp shark guy. And you're just trying to adjust. You know, I, I'm just a simple man. I, <laughs> it, it, it's just kind of tough to, to, to kind of, you know, absorb that. You really don't. Then uh, the next day we had uh, the, the Navy boat at the Superdome in New Orleans. And we had a, a great, great show up there. And he had a boot to where when you walked into the Superdome, there was one entrance open and uh, you had to almost make the round of a swamp shark drive. And it was just amazing. And uh, you got people from everywhere and you don't know any of these folks. And, and naturally, you know, you want to talk to everybody and it just everybody and anybody knows who you are because they see you on the videos. And it, it's kind of, it's not scary. It's just strange. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little different. Yeah, for it's a sure. little well, different. There yeah, you man. go. Well, I know this has been. Uh, we've been talking about about an hour now, so I really appreciate the time, Clint. And uh, guys, listen, he's been inundated with information and emails and phone calls. So uh, we're gonna post some videos. We're gonna post some content, and uh, just let's just all, you know, hold tight. It's coming. Yeah, the, the, the I'm excited to coming. see that boat that uh, you're working on. Come yeah, out. it's gonna That's be gonna be awesome. It's gonna be killer. Well. I tell you what, we, you know, I'm gonna need a little time uh, to uh, to uh, get this thing, you know, to just just moving forward. With I've been having meetings with boat manufacturers, besides, you know, because uh, uh, Metal Shark is a high end. I mean, they've got hundreds of employees. You can't build, uh, they can't afford to build a ten or fifteen thousand dollar boat because of the, the operational cost mm -hmm. of what they're doing. Okay. But I've been trying to do what I can to meet with people so that we can satisfy uh, people, you know, in what they want. And I have another important thing that I'd like to mention, uh, Pete. Yeah, sure. There are a lot of people that are calling, okay, and they want, they want it, and, and you know, we can build a bunch of boats, or, or I can give them instructions and I'll send them pictures and show them how the back of their boat, I'll sell the stringer and the keel cool kit beside the drive, and they need to set up their boat a certain way with the vertical transom to where. 
and we and, and and you didn't have you don't have to build a new boat if you got a boat that you like and it's at least 20 foot long because any shorter than that you just be wasting the motor and drive if you, from 20 foot to 24 foot you'll never notice you lose anything or less speed anything so you can turn around with this drive and you can build a boat if you're not going in too many confined areas or if you want to go in some tight areas you can build it four and a half foot bottom but it, it doesn't make any difference with that kind of power you don't notice four, five, six foot more boat, but you have more of the ability to build a boat that is more user friendly, where you can put more things in it, more people in it, do more things in your activities, and you don't have to worry that the boat, the, the drive and the engine package won't be able to push it. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Do, do you have any, I guess this could be the last question, do you have boat manufacturers lined up if someone, you know, called you up and said, hey, I got, so I got this money. I'm wanting to build one. You know, do you have boat manufacturers down around you that you can send them to and say, "Hey, here you go. This guy knows what he's doing with the Swamp Drive," and get going on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we're. I'm having meetings with more and more now. I'm gonna tell you, Metal Shark is gonna do another division that's gonna cater, but they they. They're growing by leaps and bounds, and they're going to do what they can and do some sure. cut files to where there's going to be some boats that they'll be able to cut out and sell the kit. And then how, I could have various uh, – uh, awesome, there are a lot of uh, talented boat people down here, and they can well uh, – you know, they can build probably five or six boats to where it would take without a kit, okay, and it doesn't need a jig. Uh, that That's one way we're going to do it. Uh, and and I'll have several that, that I'm meeting up with. Now, you talk about the people calling, I want a boat. I've got people emailing me and saying, look, your money's sitting on the table right here. Come get it. I mean, people <laughs> want the boat. They're not concerned about They know what they can do with, with what they see. And it, it's it's more or less all positive. I'll tell you what. It's awesome. We've, you know, just so many, and I'm meeting so many nice people, and I think this is the greatest thing about this is, is just, all over this country, the, the, you know, guys that are like minded like us, that like the woods, that mm-hmm. like, you know, the backwaters yep. and, and, and the life that we enjoy as as a, a as outdoorsmen. It's like unbelievable to meet all of these people. I think that's the that's the best part about all of this. Uh, and, but again, I have a lot of people that are calling. I say, OK, we can build a boat in Louisiana. All right. We can have the boat stamped. What are you going to do to register that boat in your state? And that, and, and, and Pete, that's a big question yeah, big mark. Big question. There are a lot of regulations, a lot of stuff. We're going to be, uh, you know, this is this this thing here is going to be all above board, or it's not going to be anything. There's not any, there's not anything that anybody asks me a question about this that I can't answer from four year, four and a half years of banging it and doing all kind of stuff. But there are some things when it comes to the business of this that have to be addressed. So there's not anyone that I can get in contact with and talk to. What are you going to do about getting this boat registered in your state? And so far, everybody is just saying, well, I don't think we're going to have a problem doing that. I think that that could be a problem. So I think that, you know, the people that will be listening, if they're interested in doing this, we'll be happy to do whatever we can. But the thing about it is, is we have to make sure that imagine you you buy this rig, you build it, and you bring it up there, and your state wildlife uh, uh, and fisheries commission turned on and said, "Hey, man, uh, uh, you you can't register this boat over here or there, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever yeah. rule and regulation your state has." And the next thing you know, what do you do? You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And it's and important. basically, what I'm what I, what another important thing is what I'm doing is I'm not interested in, I'm, I'm, I'm actually eliminating the, the middleman on this thing here. I don't, I, and, and I'm not interested in making a dollar on every step of the way. I have people that can sell you a brand new motor with warranty, which is only a year. I have people that can build you a motor that you'll never wear out for, for, for a portion of that price. And I, I can line up a customer with everything he wants. Says, okay, I want a boat. I'll take him to boat build A, B, C, D. And you decide what you want to do. You get a price from him. You do, you tell him the way you want your boat appointed, just like you go into the counter at, the, at, at whatever garage and you're ordering a car. Tell him all the amenities you want in your boat. You handle it with him. Mm-hmm. You, you you put the down payment down, and then you pay him when it's finished. I got guys that I'm tr- that I have trained that their own contractor 
I'll put the customer directly to them. They know exactly what he uh, what he wants. They give you a price. I don't add 20% to what they're doing. I have painters. I have everything. But let me tell you the deal about this business model here that I'm doing. What happens is, is you get a boat that is turnkey. When when the guys are done rigging it and cranking the motor and, and, and dialing everything in, you come in and picking up a boat that's just like you picked up a boat at a dealership, but it took a, a big chunk of money off the boat that could actually offset the price of the drive just by doing this business model. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to, uh, next time we get down to Louisiana, I'm going to definitely have to get in touch with you and come by and say mm-hmm. hi in person. That's right. Yeah, man, I'll, I'll, put that. your, I'll put you I'll put you all up at my camp and we'll take you all out. That'd be my awesome. Camp is be on, the, on the bayou up there. And I'll tell you what, I love that. That's the thing that I like the most. And, yes, uh, sir. I, I, I had a special honor uh, two uh, Sundays ago. The owner, uh, 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 Mr. Tony Taylor of uh, Louisiana Sportsman Magazine, and he's a, he, this guy is uh, very prolific in his outdoor activities. And uh, he's uh, gone for two weeks fishing. And when he comes back, uh, he's, uh, he wants to put a swamp shark on his boat. I mean, uh, that's an honor to have that guy that, that, that has seen it all and done it all to, uh, to, to really want this. So, yeah, uh, that's really it's cool. just positive all the time and including y'all. And I thank y'all so much yeah. for, 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 for the uh, hospitality guys and, uh, oh, yeah. uh, Pete being, being very nice to me. And it, it, it was, uh, it, it's a, it's a real honor to be involved with you guys and, uh, you just let me know. I, I, I've got, I'm gonna, I've got a bunch of videos I can send you for you to do whatever you need to do. Okay, man. Well, Clint, thanks again so much. This was a great talk. Uh, I think there's gonna be a lot of people really interested yes. after they get to listen to this episode. So, fantastic, guys. Um, well, Clint, thanks so much again. We'll talk to you later. Uh, look forward to seeing the product as it evolves. Yeah. Thank you. We'll be, we'll keep in touch. And uh, thank you again. Thank you all very much. All right. Hey, no problem. See you later, Clint. See you. All right, buddy. Bye-bye.